So today we are doing a real estate shoot and I wanted to show y'all my tricks to doing these things really, really efficiently. So the most efficient way possible, the most simple way possible and most consistent way possible. So no matter what skill level you're at, this is going to be helpful for you. And of course, if you know me towards the end of the video, we're going to do some more advanced, uh, fun, creative stuff too. So make sure to stick around for that. Now, thanks so much for joining. Now let's get into it. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, which is the best place and my favorite place to get your soundtracks for your real estate videos and your sound effects for your real estate videos. They've got over 40,000 original royalty-free tracks once you sign up that you can use and over 90,000 sound effects, which is insane. They're always adding more stuff every week, so it's never gonna get old. Just use the link down below and you can get 30 days for free for the commercial plan or the personal plan and yes that includes the licensing so if you use that for your projects for client work for personal work for your portfolio for just starting out um, you're going to be covered with that licensing which is a real amazing gift that they're giving to everybody so a really great way to try it out level up your videos and not spend any money no risk to you anyways we'll talk more about them later show you some of the cool features but let's get into the gear so simply put got a gimbal got a camera with the ultra wide 16 to 35 lens, full frame equivalent, and that's it. So just gotta load this up here, and then should be good to go. I've got this always on pan follow mode. That way it stays straight and keeps the horizon locked. Pan tilt follow, it's also great for more creative shots, but pan follow. That's all I really need. So I'm gonna be using the gimbal like this, like this, underslung mode to get some lower shots and we're good to go. All right, so here's how I've got my settings set. So we're gonna go to 59 frames per second. We're shooting in log. And as you can see, the waveform looks like that. So. That's about how I want it to look when we're outside, so never getting all the way to 100. Um, if you just got a histogram, that'd be all the way to the right side. It'll look like it's too far to the right and it would be clipping. We're at our native ISO 800. Switch to 5600 Kelvin for the white balance. We're in C log. I'm gonna add some ND like that to change the exposure. Once we're outside, it's gonna be a lot brighter than it is in here. That's it. If your camera doesn't have built-in NDs, you need a variable ND for your outside shots. So got one of those in here. So I got one of these like this. This Polar Pro one's really good. Two to five stops right here. And that's pretty much it. So let's go get some shots because apparently it's supposed to thunderstorm in an hour, even though right now it's nice and sunny. All right, so before we start getting these outside shots, what we gotta do is get our essential coverage. So uh, that's the whole point of this video, keep things essential, keep things minimal and simple and streamlined. So all we're gonna do is divide the whole house, inside and outside, into sections. So label each room as a section. So front house, back house, backyard, back of house, patio, interior rooms that like this that are open uh, divide it up into sections so living area kitchen dining area and then obviously bedrooms bathrooms and view from above the stairs so for this house that's all the sections we need and what we're going to do is work our way through all of them getting a push and shot so pretend like you're doing a virtual tour and you're walking into that area keep the camera focused keep the viewer focused that's it, 10 to 15 second clips per shot. If it's a big enough area or if it justifies this, uh, we're gonna get a shot from a corner doing either a panning shot if you're very, very new or we are gonna do a parallax shot. So moving the gimbal side to side while keeping it centered on the same subject in the same part of the frame. 
That's the gist of this video. Keep things really, really simple. Keep things really, really watchable and smooth and where they make sense. You're gonna be making good real estate videos in no time. Check out that view though. Super cool spot. Somebody's mowing right over there. So hopefully that doesn't mess up our audio, but man, very, very pretty scenic little spot. All right, so we're getting the front first. Four, I'm in four stops of ND and I am going to just do a easy, easy push in shot. We're just going back as far as we can, getting as long of a shot as we can, centered on the house. Okay, that looks great. It's easy. Now we're gonna go over and get some shots of this hangout area overlooking the field. Then we're gonna get some of the balcony area. And that's about it. Um, we could go really far away and zoom in on the back side of the house, but I think we'll probably be able to get that with the drone. And there's some tractor guy mowing all that right now, so it kinda looks crazy. So that's that. I'm just going to stick to the wide shots right now. I'm just focusing on the most important part. Oh, nice. So we can frame this up with these trees nicely. And just kind of glide into there. Nice. It might be a little bit bright because the sun popped out. So I'm going to try that one more time with a little more indie added. <laughs> All right, let's go. I'm gonna get a shot from over here looking back at the house too. I always like to get some stuff both ways. So just gonna do a nice parallax shot just like we did on the front of the house. All right, I'm switching to 24 millimeters. Feel a little bit more control over the composition. You get a push in shot from this corner too. But also, from here, I can block some of that truck, which is very good. Now at 3.5, so this is gonna look really good. I'm just gonna do a parallax, slight slow shot, slider shot. We can use this, um, these rocks turning into kind of a ground element that's moving as I move in the frame. That looks great. Okay, now I'm just gonna go straight towards the house. So we'll have options in the edit. I'm trying to be careful walking. This looks really good. So I'm going back to 24. So I'm just gonna do another simple shot. Sun came back out, so I'm going down to four. Aperture. Looks really good. So I'm just kind of centering it and then popping up. It's just like a cool slow rise shot. So still a push in shot, but add a little bit of a rise. That can make it look really good. Same composition, just doing a parallax. All right, so <laughs> more or less, a lot of pushing shots into different areas, every single area, and then a parallax shot from the opposite view or the same view if it can add something to the video. And that's all you really need. So I might get a few more shots real quick while it's still sunny. And then we're gonna do all the same stuff on the inside. Now I'm gonna get a few shots of this nice seating area and might even go back down there and get a shot looking down at the house just in case it rains but pretty simple there's a bunch of stuff over here by the door so i'm not going to get a shot of the doorway it's not that important or nice on this listing also another thing to keep in mind if you're wearing sunglasses while you're looking at all your screens and stuff kind of messes up the brightness so you gotta always check your histogram. 
So for this area, I'm going back down to only two stops of Indy and we are still at F4. So we should get lots of detail and it should look nice. So I'm just gonna do a straight shot walking through this area. Nicely framed and centered. On those posts. We keep going through this, almost like a FPV drone. Okay. I think that was good. Now I'm just gonna come around this corner, watching the window, making sure I don't show up in it. I'm gonna come around the corner, show this patio area. It's not that great of a shot, so I think I'm just gonna do a panning shot instead. So I'm just gonna start towards the right, go to the left pretty slowly. Show some of the view. We always cut from that to drone shot or a view shot that we might get later. All right, so what you can do to get a little bit more in your shots is zoom in. So I tried to get a shot of this couch, but it didn't really look that great because too many of the same colors. Um, so I'm gonna go back and get a shot of this bench, just kind of going up and down a little bit. Really, really simple camera movement. Might add a little bit of Parallax painting left to right, but it should be pretty good. We can get some of the Blue Ridge in the background. Just a simple little thing like that. It's too bad it's not sunny. Oh well, I'm gonna get a few more shots from down there, looking back at the house, just in case it starts raining and I'm not able to do the drone once we do the interior, but we'll see. Okay, actually found a cool shot on my way down. Always be keeping an eye out. So we're just getting a shot walking down this walking path. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> almost twisted my ankle. If you can hear that, I think it was still good. Okay. Hey guys, down here now. So here we go. Wow, this side of the house is really, really pretty. I didn't even realize how cool looking this would be. All right. So a typical plan, use trees as foreground elements. I'm gonna zoom in to 24. I always feel like that looks more, you know, picturesque, accurate. I'm starting pointed up a little bit and we're just doing a nice slow push in Okay, that was pretty good. Same thing, I'm just gonna fly towards the house. A little bit better, more controlled. Staying centered on that door area, keeping that looking pretty good. Now we're good for the basics for the exterior. All right, so since we're talking about essentials, we're only getting what we need. One of the biggest things that's gonna impact your real estate videos is having great music and sound effects. And that's where today's video sponsor, Epidemic Sound, comes in. So since audio is such a big part of video, it can either make or break your edit. So you definitely wanna go with some top-notch stuff. And Epidemic Sound has everything you're gonna need. They've got over 40,000 tracks, adding new stuff every week. It's all original, it's all royalty free, it's all professionally made, and they've got over 90,000 sound effects, so you can add all those whoosh transitions or cool little sound effects to your speed ramps and all that stuff for real estate videos. And one thing that I really appreciate about Epidemic Sound is that they are always investing in and upgrading the user interface and experience for us for finding music and making it fit to our videos. So today we're checking out their brand new feature called Sync to Video that I think you guys are gonna think is interesting for real estate. <laughs> I guess I need my laptop uh, the other way around. <laughs> 
So typically whenever I am editing and finding my music, I will have Epidemic Sound Player playing in the background while I'm watching my video. And if you're editing on a laptop particularly, it the screen gets very, very full, very, very quick, and it's not a great experience. So I really appreciate this update. Once I'm diving into my edit, I will export a couple quick key shots. So like the front exterior and maybe like an interior shot. And what you can do is actually upload it onto Epidemic Sound and it's gonna start playing right in the Epidemic Sound player. So while you're searching for your music, every time you start playing a new track, it's gonna replay the clip and you can imagine what it's gonna be like in your edited final video. So as opposed to kind of guessing, kind of visualizing and imagining, having it actually right there as if you're editing is great. And if you're doing a longer project like a bio video or maybe a vlog kind of video where you need to have tracks for different parts, you're gonna be using multiple tracks, you can even trim it within the player and preview each individual part make it start on certain parts even. Maybe you have your general edit done and you wanna export it and then just play around with only music for a while. You can just work your way through your timeline. Super simple and you can clean up that desktop making it a more stress-free and peaceful working experience for your workflow. And as you guys know, I'm always looking for ways to do that. <laughs> so that's just one feature. If you don't know anything about Epidemic Sound, um, They've got so many tracks, their searching engine is great. You can find songs based on one part of a song. You can uh, search keywords and get really, really great results that come up like immediately. You can get instrumental versions of everything. You can get the stems so you can use only like the bass or the drums or the instruments from something. Uh, to make a really, really dynamic piece. And as a company, they're very supportive of the artists that are producing the music. And especially if you are doing this stuff and making money, it is a no-brainer that you need to sign up for this stuff. So as always, make sure to use the link down below the video to get your free 30-day trial if you haven't tried it already, or just sign up if you've already got a business and you need music. I use this stuff for all my client work, all my YouTube videos, and I think you're gonna like it too. All right, I'm changing up my order a little bit because it's supposed to be raining in 30 minutes. And after that, I might be stuck with zero opportunities. So, got my drone out. Got an ND number four on it so I can use a low aperture. Get a little more cinematic looking shots. And we should be good to go and get this stuff knocked out real quick. So the whole goal for the drone shots, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get push-in shots straight towards the house, the front and the back. Then we're gonna get each corner, so right, left, on each side, and be doing a parallax shot, kind of orbiting around the whole property so you can see all the property lines and all that stuff. And then we're gonna also look around and see if there's any mountain views or anything interesting that we can get to add to the video to give some context to the listing. So, I think we're doing okay. All right, so I'm just going to set up from here. Pretty decent spot. Um, when I'm doing the front of the house, I'll walk around there so I can keep the line of sight on it from there, of course, and be safe. Number one priority. Okay, so for this drone, I'm going to go 4K 30 FPS, white balance 5500. Pretty much all the same settings as the other camera. I'm just doing video, so I'm gonna stick to 2.8 if I can. Aperture, ISO 100, cleanest image, shutter, 1 50th of a second, and should be good. A little bit bright. Actually, one sixtieth of a second. And dang, go with seven point one to get that exposure proper. So I'm gonna go back as close as I can to this tree and push in to the house. Be careful. I got hide inside. 
but we're it's a cool shot. All right, so we're hiding over here. I can see the drone. You're not gonna see me through the window. All right, just real simple push in, just like we did on the inside shot. Okay, so that was what we wanted. So now, stop this sensor, jeez. We're above the trees, so we're we're safe. Make sure my car's not in there. All right. Let's see, there we go. A real simple shot. I'm just doing a parallax from the corner to show that outside areas. Nice, that looks good. Nice and steady. Okay, safe, safe, safe. All right, that was good enough. Always scoping out the tree line before I move at all, because I do not want to lose my drone. Okay, yeah, we're good right there. Okay. So just parallax, keeping the house in the center. And... Doing the corner shot. Okay. Let me get, let me get a shot going towards these mountains that are close to the house. There we are. Nice. Looks like a good view. Because I can see the rain coming in now. Jeez. I always get unlucky with these behind the scenes videos. All right. Simple, simple. Just push away, push towards the mountains and Elevate the drone a little bit. Another parallax shot from higher up. Keeping an eye on it. Much better way to show the whole yard than what we did from the ground level. All right, now I'm going to get a shot flying towards the house from the trees. There we go. This should be cool. And I'm gonna, I forgot, I need to go into cinematic mode. That always makes my shots better. All right, here we go. So I'm just gonna do a push in. Try not to hit the trees, obviously. Flying in. And we're gonna go a little bit lower. Yee. Okay, great. I think that was good. Going back up, away from the house. I'm just gonna check if there's a good scenic view. All right, here's just a shot of the area, the road. Nice little country area. Just a push in, nothing complicated. Let's do kind of a parallax shot showing the top of the house. So just simple, we got the top of the house. You can see the driveway a little bit. These usually look pretty good. Cut into the edit. Just doing a parallax showing the front yard and the top of the house. Simple, simple. And not showing my car. Usually I park down the street, but there's no option for this place. All right, other corner, a little bit. It looks pretty cool with the trees all blowing. Even though it's not sunny, other things can end up looking really cool in video. All right, drone retrieved. So now we're done with this guy. So just gotta pack this up. Uh, maybe if the weather's better later or tomorrow morning while I'm still here, I'll get some more shots to add into the video. But we got some really cool stuff. All right, so back in the Pelican case for these guys. See if I've got my other NDs from Polar Pro. Uh, Could have gone with eight or 16 probably. With that amount of ambient light. But uh, that's why it's good to have the options. Back into hiding. Stay hydrated. All right. 
I don't think this is gonna get old. Come back to life. <laughs> All right, onto the interiors. I have a circular polarizer I forgot to mention. I was using it on the outside shots because it helps you get a little more saturated colors because it cuts down the glares on plants and stuff or on the house. But for the inside, since we are in some low light territory right here, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off because it takes away a little bit of the light and we're gonna adjust our settings for the inside. So the main difference is gonna be, I'm gonna switch to 30 frames per second just because it's a lot easier to get cleaner shots. 30 frames per second because you can have a slower shutter speed and let in more light, etc. It's looking like I'm gonna have to switch my ISO, might go with 1600. Oh, just kidding. I've got two stops of ND on. All right, so we got that and I'm going to switch my white balance to 4650. Since we got mixed lighting, that usually works pretty well, 46 to 4800. And I'm just sticking with 2.8, uh, 2.8 aperture, because I like how it looks. You could go sharper if you want to with a higher number. But for me, I like it. We're gonna do the exact same strategy as before where we are gonna get literally a push-in shot or a parallax shot for each section of the house. So we got dining, we got kitchen, we got living, we got a bedroom, bathroom, upstairs. Those are all sections of the house. So if it's an open floor plan like this, I like to think about it in sections and divide it up so that you make sure you get enough shots to show each area at its best. For bigger areas like this, I'll get a shot from the other corner, doing a parallax shot, showing the view looking back as well. Um, really helps show the floor plan and it's just a good practical useful shot so yes also i've been sick so if my voice sounds you know a little weird that's why so not sure where i can put the camera to hide it while i do this but we'll see and we're in action Another thing you could do to streamline your process even more is while you're shooting, if you want to, you could shoot everything in order how you want to edit it. And then that's just going to make your editing even easier doing it chronologically as opposed to having to, you know, reorganize it, re-remember things when you're on your computer or if you have an editor. But for me, I make bins and organize everything before I edit. So it doesn't really matter that much, but just a little tip you might like. Eh. So here we go. I'm just watching out for my car in that window. So obviously I could move it too, but for this sake, I'm just gonna start here. So I'm just doing a parallax shot, the pushing shot and actually it's not that good. So this is all uneven. The window is not lined up with the table. That's what I'm talking about. So this is a lot better, a lot more symmetrical. I'm just gonna match these chairs up. So, I'm just gonna do a push in shot straight towards this. This is much better actually. You can see the window, super nice. Super nice shot. So we're just going flashlight mode, going. Okay, nice. Backwards, always do it backwards just in case it looks better. Okay, and this gimbal makes it easy. I'm just gonna do a slider shot back and forth, holding the button on my gimbal so that it doesn't move. And that's all. Now, onto the kitchen. So same thing, push in shot, center everything up, get all your verticals nice and straight looking. And this one's a lot easier to do starting here. So I'm gonna do that holding the button so that it stays perfectly straight. We can also get a parallax shot from here. Okay. The exposure is all the same for all these shots, so I'm not having to change anything, by the way. All right, so I'm just doing a parallax to show the bar and everything. 
maybe I'll start in. I'll do a push out and a parallax, so a little more complex, but makes for a cooler edit. All right, so that works, that works, that works. Now, it's not bad. I'm just gonna do a focus on the appliances and I'm just gonna do a side to side slider shot. We're gonna get a push in shot from here. Uh, for all the other rooms, I'm not gonna do this many but kitchens and <clears throat> kitchens and living areas are, you know, basically the selling point for houses. So got to get them really, really well covered. Now we're going to get this side. So same thing. We're just going to go ahead and get a push in entry to the room. So probably this is a good one right here. Get in as far as we can and keep that as straight as we can the whole time. That looks really cool. That looks good. So we can get one from this side too, because that's kind of how you enter the house. Always want to show that experience as you, know, you walk in and look up and amazement of the house, how cool it is. So I'm actually going to curve a little bit on this one. So centering it. There we go. And the reason I panned a little bit while I was doing that push in is in order to keep it composed, keep your viewer focused on the room that we're actually trying to show off. If I went in straight, it would have looked like this or something and that's just kind of not really leading you anywhere so keeping you led this way to the center of the room and showing those stairs and the windows i think that works better could have also gone up a little bit to show that high ceiling but i think we could show that from the other corner so now you gotta get one from these stairs i'm just gonna move this bird outside so stairs elevated corners like this are a rare thing that happens sometimes but it's always a cool perspective because you can use this as a little bit of foreground to add some interest to the shot this gives you a really neat perspective to be able to open up that shot and show how big the room is so i'm just going to do a parallax shot like that i'm kind of going down a tiny bit too to keep it just like we were saying a second ago, um, focus on the room. If it's too high, sometimes it's like, what is the shot showing? But if you keep it lower, focuses it on that room. So we're going for simple and that's all the simple stuff. I think one more must is doing a push in straight towards the fireplace. Always, always do that if you can. Line it up, make sure your verticals look good and all that stuff. I'm gonna go back down into, I don't know what this is called, briefcase under slug mode or something. So just straighten it out. And having the second handle makes it so much easier. So just keeping that fireplace centered on the X on my screen. Pushing in. And while I was moving this around, it looked like it'd be cool to do this too, slider shot. Throwing that in there too. Bedrooms. All right, so our settings are staying pretty much the same. These are a lot darker though. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this light so that the contrast with this hallway and the inside of the room is not so bad color-wise. Exposure looks really good on the histogram and I really like how it actually looks Everything looks daylight colored and pretty. So, gotta go into tiny mode. So for bedrooms, same thing as the living room I was explaining. If you go in and have it like turn towards the windows, 
that's kind of confusing. What what is this room? What is this shot about? I really like to keep it centered on the bed as much as possible. And that way you're leading the viewer through what you want them to see. And I like to do these lower so that you're not you get way higher than the bed and you can see some of the floor. All right, once again. Ooh, gotta redo it one more time. So, starting out straight. Nice. It's a lot easier to do it with this gimbal and keep it like this. Well, now that I'm getting more used to it, as opposed to being so low to the ground. This thing's really cool. So same thing here. We're just going to go. Whoosh. Yeah. All right, bathroom. This one's looking really dark. So I think we can open up the blind. And it's going to be fine with this light on. We can just change our white balance to 30. 200, 3700, somewhere in there. This would be the same if you're shooting at night. Um, you would just have darker green windows. Kind of cool looking. I can't tell if I'm in there. So what we can do is just do this same slider shot on pan tilt follow. So we can go from you know, this normal view to up here, just a simple pan right to left while tilting up, pan and tilt. Pretty cool, simple way to do the transition, but now we're going up. We are just gonna go around this corner, get this room, changing my settings a little bit, 3.5, because it's a little bit brighter. Just stay in focus in the middle of the room. All right, so I'm gonna start further back. Go straight, and then I'm panning into this room, keeping it centered, just like always. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a slider shot like here. So I'm gonna hold the button and go like that, looks nice. Or this. So you can pretend like you're living there on the couch. And then we definitely want to make sure to get some shots looking down as well. You can do one just another push in kind of shot just straight like that. I like a harsh angle so it's mostly a top down shot. It's a pretty cool shot. And then we got the primary bedroom right behind you guys. So I'm going to do a push in shot in there. Make sure we show everything. So I'm gonna have to readjust the settings again because it's another bedroom that's darker. So I'm probably going to 2.8 and then we should be good to go. But going down low again, just so much easier, so much easier. Um, if you don't have one of these gimbals or one of these handles like this, um, that's a game changer and it's super lightweight too. Definitely worth it for the upgrade. Okay, so this room is actually bigger. I'll get y'all in here, don't worry. So this is a weird layout, but basically, you know, we got this area, whole nother area over there. And we got a whole sitting area and the bathrooms right there. So I'm gonna get a shot that shows the connection of all of that. Just to make sure, just to make sure we cover everything. Another thing that would actually work if we're trying to go really, really simple and get one shot would be to start from that area and swoop in here because that would show the connection to the bathroom, the connection to the upstairs loft area, the window, the giant closet. Showing connections is definitely important. So opening these doors, opening that kind of stuff up really, really changes the 
shot. And I'm gonna get this window too. I missed it earlier. So it's gotten much darker outside since we started shooting. So we gotta wrap this up pretty soon. Decent angle. So just literally gonna get down into the corner. Make sure we're at 16. Make sure the settings are good. And just a normal pan shot. This is how I started doing video, was doing pan shots with just a tripod. <laughs> so that's it. Obviously I'm redoing this for the real shot because the camera's right there, but that's fine. So next, start low, frame it with these walls, fly in, up a little bit and show that connection. That's it. So that's a wrap on all of the essential shots that you need to get. And uh, this is how I would recommend starting because you can get really, really professional looking, really consistent looking results. And you're not going to have way too many shots to deal with in editing. You're not going to be trying too hard to make a cool video. You're just going to have a simple and effective real estate video. And that's essentially the function of all of these. So whether they are more high tech and complicated and trendy, or if they are super simple and effective, they're all still serving that function no matter what, no matter how complicated your moves are, no matter how many different lenses you have, no matter how many different time lapses you do or whatever. Um, the first thing you want to make sure you do is serve the function first. So if you're doing that, your client's probably going to be happy. The other stuff is just when you get bored doing this and you want to level it up, you want to show off to your friends, you want to charge more and so on and so forth. So at this point, I would normally personally go back and get some more creative shots. So I would switch lenses, get like a 50 millimeter or tighter, maybe 70. If you have a 24 to 70, you could use it for this. And um, just go back and get some details honed in on some really, really important selling features like appliances or the house number, the front door area, the patio zoomed in a little bit more would look cool. And just some kind of magical fancy looking details. If there's anything super, super unique about the house, that can work really, really well with the tighter lens. So if you're still here, thanks so much for watching the video. And if you've been around for a while, your support, obviously you guys know means a ton to me and keeps the channel going. And just want to say once again, big thanks to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Working with them has been great the last year that I've been working with them on this behind the scenes series specifically. So if you haven't checked out Epidemic Sound already, make sure to check them out and you can start using that free trial for either the personal plan or the commercial plan for 30 days. But anyways, let me know if you have any questions about any of this stuff and I'll get back to you ASAP. So thanks so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. I've got a security camera here, so this is probably pretty hilarious to watch. 
Yeah, I can feel it starting to rain. Shoot. Across the street now. The camera angle was bad, I guess. Where I ended up. Yeah, I think so. Waste of time. Not waste any time.